Hey everyone, so let's talk about nosy. No, no, not like, not like that kind of nosy. I mean, nuclear overhauser effect spectroscopy. Nosy is a method that lets us find the distance between atoms. This can be useful for many types of research in chemistry, biology, and physics. For example, say you're studying a molecule that can be arranged in different ways, and you want to know how it's shaped to predict its reactivity. Or maybe you want to know if two different molecules are interacting with each other in a biological system. These are situations where NOSI can be really useful. The spectroscopy in NOSI refers to nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or NMR spectroscopy, which is a technique used to detect different atomic nuclei. NMR spectroscopy actually operates based on the same principles as MRI, just smaller. So imagine you're studying a certain molecule. You may be familiar with how electrons configure themselves in an atom. Electrons like to be in the low energy ground state, but they can be excited into a higher energy state by a photon with the right amount of energy. The same is actually true for nuclei in your molecule, but they need to be in a magnetic field. That's because nuclei have magnetic moments that will either align with or against the magnetic field. Now the difference in energy between these states depends on the magnetic field strength. If the field isn't strong enough, the nuclei don't really care whether they're in the low or higher energy state. But if we want to excite them from the low to high energy state, we need to start with more nuclei in the lower energy state. That's why NMR spectrometers often use superconducting magnets with field strengths of over 10 teslas. For comparison, the Earth's magnetic field is around just 50 microteslas. Every type of nucleus needs a different amount of energy to flip from one state to the other. So if we choose a certain element, like hydrogen, which is in all sorts of molecules, we can use photons of the right energy to cause the hydrogen and nuclei to change states. We can detect the change in the magnetization, and that tells us that there is hydrogen in the molecule. But we can actually learn a lot more than that. That's because a different electron density surrounds each nucleus depending on its place in the molecule. The electrons are also affected by the magnetic field, so they change the energy gap. So we end up with different signals for different nuclei depending on the atoms surrounding them. There are also a lot of other effects that can give us useful information by modifying the NMR spectrum. One is the nuclear overhauser effect. After the nuclei are excited, they will relax back to their equilibrium states. Nuclei that are close to each other can undergo cross-relaxation, where they transfer energy between each other while relaxing. This is only noticeable when the atoms are less than about five angstroms apart. That's the length of about five hydrogen atoms. So NOSI experiments are NMR spectroscopy experiments that are specifically designed to measure this cross-relaxation. NOSI can be especially useful for studying biological systems, where interactions between molecules can have important health implications. Since organic molecules tend to contain a lot of hydrogen, we can get a lot of information from NOSI experiments on hydrogen nuclei. A study used NOSI to show how the lipid membranes of cells behave. The results showed that the hydrophilic heads of lipid membranes are usually close to each other, and the hydrophobic tails are close to each other. But there was also cross-relaxation between different segments of the lipids, because they were wiggling around. This experiment supported the idea that the cell membrane is a fluid mosaic, as opposed to a rigid structure. NOSI can also show how drugs interact with the cell membrane. Many drugs are small molecules that can wedge their way into a cell membrane, so it's important that they don't disrupt cell membranes when they're not supposed to. In 2020, a study found that ibuprofen sits with its nonpolar region in the middle of the membrane and its polar end facing out. Plus, even at a high concentration of ibuprofen, it didn't break the membrane, which is definitely good. There are a ton of other applications of NOSI out there. It's been used to study food ingredients, RNA, proteins, drugs, and more. So by using NOSI, we can really nose a lot about how molecules interact with each other. <sighs>